New York, Caracas, London, all way up above sea level. And then there is Amsterdam, about two meters below sea level. Yeah, we are below sea level. And somehow we are still not swimming to go anywhere. So, how does that thing work? How a city that's technically underwater stay perfectly dry? To find out, I went somewhere that opened its doors to the public for the first time, on Monumentum Dag, that is the Dutch Heritage Day. It's called Hemal Seiburg, and is actually considered a monument here in Amsterdam. And once you see what's inside, it totally makes sense. This place is like stepping inside the heart of the city's water system. Hemal Seiburg has been working non-stop for over a hundred years pumping water out of the city to keep the canals nice and dry. To understand how this system keeps Amsterdam dry, we first need to zoom out and see the big picture. About one third of the Netherlands sits below sea level. That means the ocean and even the rivers are higher than a lot of the land people live on. So yeah, gravity is not exactly on our side here. But the Dutch, they didn't move, they got creative. They built a whole system to outsmart water. Back in the day, people used windmills to pump water out of low-lying areas, creating lands called polders. Each windmill acted like a water elevator, scooping water up and dumping into a higher canal until it eventually floated out to the sea. And that system has evolved into one of the most advanced water management networks in the world. Every region has its own water authority, managing levels in lakes, canals, and rivers. It's like an orchestra, and all the pumps has to play in tune. Here is how it works. The Netherlands isn't just flat. It's basically a giant water crossroad. Huge rivers like the Rhine, the Meuse, and the Scheldt flow right through the country on their way to the ocean. But the sea level is rising. The land is slowly sinking, and storms are getting stronger and wetter than ever. To protect the country from flooding, the Netherlands has built over 3,700 kilometers of water defenses. That's like a watery fortress stretching from one end of the country to the other end. We've got natural barriers, like sand dunes, and maintenance ones like dikes, dams, and massive storm surge barriers that can hold back the sea itself. Without these defenses, Amsterdam would become the Lake Amsterdam. When it rains anywhere in the Netherlands, that water flows into local ditches, canals, and rivers. All part of a massive, connected system that keeps the country dry and livable. Here's the challenge. When a storm comes from the North Sea, it pushes seawater into the coast, raising sea levels and putting pressure on the dikes. At the same time, rivers are trying to send rainwater out to the sea, so water's coming in from both directions. And that's a problem. If water levels rise too high, sensors across the country send automatic signals and this is what happens. Every coastal defense in the system kicks into action. To stop seawater from flooding the country, huge storm surge barriers close automatically. When the water returns to its normal level, the defenses reopen. It's the largest and most famous part of the water defenses. These all belong to the Delta Works. This is even sometimes called the eighth wonder of the world. Right next to these massive movable sluice gates, you will find another type of movable gates, the Harry Flittant, which is also part of the incredible Dutch Delta Works. The gates here are placed symmetrically on both sides of the central road. But why? This is to keep the water flow balanced, the structure stable, and the forces on the dam perfectly even. They are essential for keeping the perfect balance between fresh river water and salty seawater, and they help release excess river water during periods of high flow. And the next up in our tour of the Netherlands water defenses, meet the Maslan Kering, one of the most impressive pieces of engineering on the planet. Located near Rotterdam, this is a massive storm surge barrier designed to protect both the city and the port of Rotterdam, one of the busiest ports in the world, from dangerous North Sea storms. Unlike most barriers, this one uses rotating sector gates, sometimes called floating arms. 
when a storm surge is predicted, the two giant gates swing out from both sides of the canal and meet in the middle and sink to the bottom, sealing it off like a giant mechanical hog that keeps the sea out. Each gate is as long as the Eiffel Tower line on its side, and it's one of the largest moving structures on the planet. The next one in line is a world record breaker, the largest sea lock on the planet. Welcome to Seislausen Eimauden, the gateway between Amsterdam and the North Sea. This mega engineering marvel connects the North Sea Canal to the open ocean, letting massive cargo ships and cruise liners reach Amsterdam port safely, no matter the tide. This lock is big enough to fit two Eiffel Towers laid end to end. Alright, but how it works? Imagine that this canal in Amsterdam isn't flat. It has different heights, like a staircase made of water. So this lock lets the ships move from one level to another. The channel is divided into sections, each one sealed off by sluice gates. When the ship approaches, it sails into the first chamber and the gate closes behind it. Now the chamber fills with water from the higher level, slowly lifting the ship upward. Once the water level matches the next section, the front gate opens and the ship moves forward to the next step. Then the process repeats until the ship reaches the top. If the ship is going the other way, the process works in reverse. Let's move to the next structure in the water defense system, the Aflai Dike, a massive 32 km long barrier that keeps the sea at bay and protects the land from flooding. In the past, sea water regularly inundated towns and farmland. To stop this, engineers seal off the entire bay, transforming it from a salt water inlet into a fast freshwater lake and created new land behind it. This dike is inside huge sluice gates that open only when the tide is low. Fresh water from the lake flows out to sea by gravity. When the tide rises, the gates close again, locking out the salt water. But as sea levels climb, gravity alone isn't always enough. That's why modern electric pumping stations have been added, capable of moving millions of liters of water every minute. This dike also includes an innovative fish migration channel that lets fish swim freely between the sea and the freshwater lake, revitalizing the region's natural ecosystem. Now we are going to look at one of the weirdest and most ingenious of them all, the Ranspol Barrier, what's basically a giant inflatable balloon. The Ranspol Barrier protects the low-lying areas around Kampen and Suole from flooding when strong storms push water up from the Isle Mer. But unlike the massive steel gates of the Maslan Kirin near Rotterdam, this one works in a completely different way. When a storm surge threatens, engineers inflate huge rubber membranes lying on the bottom of the channel. These membranes rise from the riverbed and form a solid wall of water-filled rubber that holds back the storm water. Here there is no steel, no concrete, just air and water. Clever, eh? It's almost the same as pumping a huge tire of a bicycle. And here is the process. First, they pump in water from the same lake, just enough to match the water level outside. That's what gives the membrane its shape and stability. Next, compressed air is blasting, kind of like filling up a giant tire, until the barrier is strong enough to stand up to the storm surge. And when the danger is gone, the air is released, the membranes collapse, and the whole thing gently sinks back to the bottom, ready for the next storm. The whole process takes about one and a half hours to inflate the barrier completely, and it's automated, controlled by sensors that monitor water levels and weather forecast. And because it's mostly made of flexible materials, it's cheaper, lighter, and easier to maintain than traditional barriers. So now we know how the Netherlands stays safe when storms hit, with huge barriers holding back the sea. But that raises a big question. If the water can't go out to the sea, where does it go? To manage all this water, the Dutch built one of the most advanced water systems in the world. They use storage basins and lakes like the Iselmer and Markermeer to temporarily hold back excess water during storms and heavy rain. Across the country, Thousands of pumping stations and sluices constantly move water in and out of polders and canals, 
and here's where Hemal Seiborg plays a crucial role. This massive pumping station sits on the eastern edge of Amsterdam, near Seiburg Island, where the Amsterdam Drain Canal, Eimer, and the city's main waterways converge. Normally, excess water of Amsterdam canals drains naturally into the eye or Eimer, but during a storm, when water levels outside are too high, gravity alone isn't enough. And it's during times of emergency that this station powers up, pushing water to the Eimer at full capacity to prevent flooding. This station has four electric horizontal screw pumps with a combined capacity of 3,600 cubic meters per minute distributed as follows. Three pumps with a capacity of 800 cubic meters per minute each and one pump with a capacity of 1,200 cubic meters per minute. With all pumps running, you can fill an Olympic pool in 42 seconds or pump about 1.4 pools per minute or 86 pools per hour. The water is pushed through a hidden siphon beneath the canal that's crossing right in front of the outlet of the pumping station before continuing its way to the Eimer. When the storm passes, the station returns to its normal operating mode, where the pumps work in the opposite direction. This station works together with the city's system of locks and sluices. Several times a week, the locks are closed and fresh water from the Eisenmer or Markermer is pumped in. This creates currents that push older, stagnant water out through the open locks on the opposite side of the city. To make sure there is enough space to handle storm water, the Netherlands often pre-drains certain areas and uses detailed hydrological models to anticipate heavy rainfall or river inflows. Weather forecasts here aren't just for planning. They are essential for saving the city from flooding. Hemal Seiburg used to play a vital role in keeping Amsterdam's canal fresh, flushing water from the Southern Sea and later the Eimer. Today, with modern pipes connecting homes for waste, the canals aren't as dirty as they once were. Today, this place stands as one of Amsterdam's iconic monuments. You can still walk through its rich history, tracing its journey all the way back to 1943, when it was first built. Some corners still whisper stories of what it once was. Over the years, it's transformed again and again, becoming one of the key sites that keep Amsterdam safe and dry to this day. So yeah, New York might be above sea level. Caracas might be above in the clouds. And London? London got its rainy charm. But Amsterdam? We are chilling below sea level. Big thanks to Hema Seiburg for letting me pick inside. So for now, see you next time.